My name is uh, Mahmoud Hassanin. I'm professor of cardiology at Alexandria University. I'm the past president of the uh, working group, Egyptian working group of heart failure. And I am the principal investigator of the Egyptian heart failure registry. Uh, my topic today is about heart failure. This is my agenda. I'm going to discuss the definition of heart failure, phenotypes, symptoms and signs, classification, etiology, pathophysiology, precipitating factors of heart failure, and investigations. Other colleagues will discuss uh, uh, other items of heart failure like uh, pharmacologic treatment and non-pharmacologic treatment. So definition of heart failure is a syndrome in which patients have typical symptoms, for example, breathlessness, ankle swelling, and fatigue, and typical signs, for example, elevated jugular venous pressure, uh, pulmonary crackles, and displaced apex beat resulting from an abnormality of cardiac structure or function. Thus, the diagnosis, I want to say this point, of heart failure is mainly clinical and uh, it cannot be made without the typical symptoms and signs of heart failure. Phenotypes of heart failure, first backward versus forward failure. In the backward failure hypothesis, when the ventricle fails, the blood accumulates in the ventricle, then atrial pressure rises and venous pressure uh, will rise. On the uh, right side, it will cause systemic venous congestion, and on the left side, it will cause pulmonary venous congestion. Uh, this will lead to congestion, as I said, whether a systemic congestion or pulmonary venous congestion, and that's why the term congestive heart failure was coined. Uh, congestive heart failure is the most dominant form of heart failure. It accounts for almost 90% of cases of heart failure. <clears throat> the other type is forward failure, where there is low cardiac output, which leads to diminished perfusion of vital organs like the kidney, the skin, skeletal muscle, and GIT. Hypo, forward failure will lead to hypoperfusion, and this is the other type of heart failure, which is uh, due to hypoperfusion, it represents about 10% of cases of uh, heart failure. As an example of forward failure is a patient who develops uh, acute myocardial infarction. Then we have uh, left-sided versus right-sided uh, congestive heart failure. The typical symptoms of left-sided heart failure are exertional dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, cough, and cardiac asthma. The low output symptoms are mainly fatigue and diminished exercise tolerance. Signs due to left-sided heart failure, left-sided congestive heart failure, are a third sound gallop, which is uh, heard mainly over the apex of the heart, tachypnea, cardiomegaly, pulses alternance, and pulmonary venous congestion on uh, rentgenography. <clears throat> Signs due to low cardiac output, are altered mentation, cool clammy skin, oliguria, low blood pressure, and narrow pulse pressure. <clears throat> Congestive symptoms due to right-sided heart failure include ankle edema, abdominal distension, ascites, nausea, or vomiting, and nocturia. Signs due to right-sided heart failure, congestive right-sided failure, include distended jugular veins, congestive hepatomegaly, ascites, peripheral edema, and third sound gallop heard over uh, that tricuspid area. The third phenotype is low output versus high output heart failure. The low output heart failure is most common type of heart failure. Uh, for example, heart failure complicating acute myocardial infarction. The skin is cool and clammy, there, there are cyanotic extremities, oliguria, and altered mentation. High output heart failure is less, less common. It occurs in high output states. Uh, extremities are usually warm and flushed. Arteriovenous oxygen difference is minimal because of the hyperkinetic circulation and the pulse pressure is widened. Uh, high uh, uh, cardiac output states include thyrotoxicosis, severe anemia, arteriovenous fistula, very, very pages disease of bone, pregnancy, and hepatic cirrhosis. The fourth phenotype is systolic versus diastolic heart failure. In systolic heart failure, uh, there is inability to pump an adequate volume of blood to the tissues. Thus, the heart muscle does not, or apparently does not contract 
properly and there is usually abnormal wall motion in the form of global hypokinesia. Uh, this leads to inadequate forward cardiac output and ejection fraction is usually reduced. As an example of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is idiopathic dilated uh, cardiomyopathy. The other type of heart failure is diastolic heart failure or the new terminology of not so uh, new heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. In this case, there is defect in ventricular filling, thus the ability of the ventricle to accept blood is impaired. The heart muscle apparently contracts normally, but there is delayed relaxation and or stiff ventricle. Ejection fraction is usually preserved or mildly reduced. Let's look to this cartoon. On the left panel shows a normal heart. The middle panel shows a patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. As we see, uh, there is eccentric hypertrophy. The heart is dilated and there is global hypokinesia and the ejection fraction is reduced. The panel on the right side shows a patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Here the patient shows concentric hypertrophy. Uh, <clears throat> the cavity of the left ventricle is normal or small and the ejection fraction is normal or increased. Let's see a, a, a video of a patient with normal, uh, normal patient with normal wall motion and normal ejection fraction. This is a patient presenting with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. As we see, the heart is dilated and there is global hypokinesia. This is a patient with left ventricular hypertrophy, concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. As we saw, wall motion is excellent, uh, even hypercontractile state, and ejection fraction is preserved. The ejection fraction is defined by the amount of blood pumped out of the ventricle divided by the total amount of blood in the ventricle. Uh, the equation is end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume or in other terms the stroke volume divided by the end diastolic volume usually the ejection fraction is about 55 percent so there are main two types of heart failure heart failure with reduced ejection fraction the ejection fraction is 40 percent or less and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction where the ejection fraction is above 50 percent Patients with a left ventricular ejection in the range of 40 to 49 percent, percent represent a gray zone or a gray area, which is now defined as heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction. Uh, actually, those patients with uh, uh, heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction resemble patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. They have the similar, more or less similar, uh, underlying etiology, and they respond more or less to the same therapies used to treat patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The four, fifth phenotype is acute versus chronic heart failure. This depends on the time factor and how rapid the syndrome develops. For example, a patient presenting with acute myocardial infarction may develop acute heart failure within a few hours. Uh, uh, a patient with uh, valvular aortic stenosis may take years uh, to develop heart failure and depends on the compensatory uh, mechanisms and the time uh, needed to, uh, for these mechanisms to take effect. The New York Heart Association fun function classification is based on severity of symptoms uh, and physical activity. So class one is the mildest form. There is no limitation of physical activity. Ordinary physical activity does not cause undue breathlessness, fatigue, or palpitations. Uh, the sim if the symptoms are escalated uh, in class four, the patient is unable to carry on any physical activity without uh, discomfort. Symptoms uh, can be present at rest. The value of this uh, classification, New York Heart Association classification, uh, gives us uh, 
an idea, a good idea about the severity of the illness, uh, the prognosis of the patient. In this figure, we see that patients in New York Heart Association Class 1 have a better, much better survival than patients who have New York Heart Association Class 2 to 4. Now we are going to discuss etiology of heart failure. Heart failure should never be the only diagnosis, just like jaundice. You have to find an underlying cause. This is the analogy, uh, donkey analogy, which we use frequently <clears throat> to describe the etiology of heart failure. The donkey represents the myocardium and the cart represents the loads imposed on the heart. So, uh, the heart failure may be due to primary myocardial abnormality or insult, which leads to decrease in the work capacity of the heart, or it may be due to increase in the workload of the heart, which will lead to exhaustion of compensatory cardiovascular reserve mechanisms, and eventually the patient will develop heart failure. The loads of the heart may be pressure overload or volume overload. The pressure overload on the left ventricle may be due to valvular aortic stenosis or hypertension. Of course, hypertension is much more prevalent in the community and a large percentage of heart failure is attributed to uh, presence of hypertension. Pressure overload on the right ventricle may be due to valvular pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary hypertension. Uh, volume overload on the left ventricle may be to valvular aortic regurgitation or valvular mitral regurgitation or arterial venous fistula. On the right ventricle may be due to atrial septal defect, tricuspid, and pulmonary regurgitation. Myocardial disease may be due to idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy or secondary cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, and coronary artery disease. In a nutshell, a substantial proportion of patients uh, with heart failure, the, the, the main causes are coronary artery disease, hypertension, uh, valvular heart disease, and dilated cardiomyopathy. Now we're going to discuss pathophysiology of heart failure, which is very important to uh, uh, understand uh, the mechanism of the disease and uh, the treatments we use to treat the disease. First, there is uh, intense neuroendocrine uh, derangements in heart failure. <clears throat> Whenever there is an insult to the heart, there is a cardiac uh, structure or function abnormality, this would lead to activation of compensatory mechanisms to maintain cardiac output and organ perfusion. That's the sympathetic nervous system and the renin angiotensin system are activated <clears throat> in response to the reduced cardiac output. This will lead to short-term effects which are beneficial in early heart failure, but long-term uh, activation exerts unfavorable and deleterious effects. On the converse, the natriuretic peptide system releases natriuretic peptides in response to cardiac stress, and these uh, peptide hormones oppose the actions of activation of the RAS system and the sympathetic nervous system. Thus, uh, activation of the sympathetic nervous system leads to vasoconstriction, increased RAS activity, increased vasopressin secretion, increased heart rate, and increased contractility. Activation of the RAS system uh, by the angiotensin II will lead to vasoconstriction, blood pressure uh, elevation, sympathetic tone uh, uh, enhancement, increased secretion of aldosterone uh, and hypertrophy and fibrosis. <clears throat> the natriuretic peptides will lead to uh, opposite effects, vasodilatation, lowering of blood pressure, natriuresis, diuresis, uh, decrease in the aldosterone secretion, decrease in fibrosis and hypertrophy. In the treatment of heart failure, we use uh, beta blockers to counteract uh, activation of the sympathetic nervous system. We use RAS inhibitors such as ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, uh, mineral receptor antagonists uh, to un antagonize the effects of intense RAS activation. And you, we use neprilysin inhibitors to uh, enhance uh, uh, the natriuretic peptide system. Uh, and as you will know later, uh, 
in the treatment of heart failure, uh, neprilysin inhibitors are combined with angiotensin receptor blockers in the molecule uh, <clears throat> uh, Entresto, Sacubitril, uh, Valsartan. The renin uh, angiotensin aldosterone system is also activated in heart failure. As you know, the renin enzyme is secreted from the kidney whenever there is a reduced cardiac output, hypoperfusion or ischemia. This will act on angiotensinogen secreted from the liver with breakdown or splitting of four amino acids, giving the uh, uh, decapitite angiotensin 1. And angiotensin converting enzyme secreted from the epithelial cells in the kidneys and the lungs will break down angiotensin 1 into angi the octapetite angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 acts on the suprarenal cortex to secrete aldosterone. And you can block this system at every step at the renal level, at the ACE uh, angiotensin converting enzyme level, and at the aldosterone uh, angiotensin, uh, sorry, receptor. And uh, uh, Finally, at the aldosterone receptor system. <clears throat> the precipitating factors for heart failure are important to remember and to look for because a patient with stable heart failure may turn into a patient with acute heart failure all of a sudden because of arrhythmias, supraventricular arrhythmias, particularly atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation, pulmonary thromboembolism, systemic infection particularly viral pneumonia, acute myocardial ischemia, uncontrolled high blood pressure, infective endocarditis, myocarditis, whatever the cause, high cardiac output states, most important are anemia, thyrotoxicosis, and pregnancy, and development of another systemic illness, which is common in heart failure, like uh, uh, renal failure, parenchyma liver disease, endocrine, and metabolic disorders. Overtransfusion of fluids, particularly in the post-operative state, Drugs, drugs may precipitate heart failure if we are using cardiodepressant drugs like large doses of beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, antiarrhythmic agents, antineoplastic agents, and alcohol, and salt retaining uh, uh, drugs like using glucocorticoids, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, and estrogens. Physical, environmental, and meta emotional excesses are important. Uh, precipitating factors, excess salt intake, which is common in our Egyptian society, humid hot weather, emotional and physical stress, excessive use of alcohol, non-compliance with drug therapy, which is quite frequent, and uh, uh, lastly, natural progression of the underlying disease. Investigations in patients with heart failure are simple. Electro electrocardiogram is a must, chest X-ray, routine laboratory works, echocardiography, including Doppler, and very occasionally cardiac catheterization and coronary angiography. This is a plain X-ray of the chest and heart showing cardiomegaly and pulmonary venous congestion, which is suggestive, just seeing chest like this is suggestive of heart failure. Uh, looking for the natriuretic peptides. As we know, uh, natriuretic peptides are released whenever there is increased cardiac stress. Natriuretic peptides will lead to vasodilatation lowering blood pressure, and increased natriuresis and uh, diuresis. <clears throat> the effects of the natriuretic peptides uh, are counter-regulatory to the effects of the renal angiotensin system uh, activation. So uh, we have two main two peptides of hormones, an atrionatric peptide and the brain natriuretic peptide. Echocardiography is a class one indication, which must be uh, uh, done in every patient presenting with uh, symptoms and signs of heart failure. This is the algorithm whenever you see a patient with suspected heart failure. You have to take very good history, ask for history of coronary artery disease, whether a myocardial infarction, revascularization, history of uh, arterial hypertension, symptoms like paroxysm and nocturnal dyspnea, orthopnea, exertional dyspnea, and then look uh, during physical examination for uh, ex ex distended jugular veins, pedal edema, uh, crackles, cardiac murmur, third heart sound gallop, and number three, ECG. If all three are negative, heart failure is unlikely. If one parameter or more is positive, then heart failure is likely. Then we shift to the next step is uh, 
look for the nitro peptides, ask for nitro peptides uh, for N NT, probably NP, which is frequently used. The cutoff point is 125 uh, picogram per millimeter, and BNP, the cutoff point is 35 uh, picogram per millimeter. If nitro peptide levels are below these uh, cutoff points, then heart failure is unlikely. The nitro peptides carry a very high negative predictive value, above 90%. So if the nitro peptides are negative, then most probably the patient does not have heart failure. If nitro peptides are positive, then the patient is, uh, or the probability of heart failure is high. So I'm going to ask for echocardiography to uh, prove the diagnosis and classify heart failure, whether it is reduced or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, and look for the underlying etiology. Well, this was my uh, final slide. And thank you for your uh, attention and hope to see you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.